Hey guys, it's Mark Flockhart just coming back with another tip for home insurance. Uh, today's more just the basics just to kind of go over the coverages and what, they're, what they are, what you need, and what they mean. So when you're looking at that paper or you're talking with the insurance guy on the phone, the first thing they're going to mention is the uh, dwelling. That's coverage A. Uh, that means the actual home, the cost it would to repair the house. So coverage A is typically uh, more than you think it is because let's say for example I'm buying a house and on Zillow which is almost never right <laughs> but Zillow says it's a hundred and eighty thousand dollar house and that house is fifteen hundred square feet okay so a fifteen hundred square foot on Zillow in this location is a hundred eighty thousand one thing they're considering <clears throat> is the land value the location that's a that's a actual value but when you're looking at insurance, it doesn't matter because they don't insure the land. You can never insure a piece of grass. You can get insure dirt, um, at least not, not in the U.S. anyways. <laughs> so you got to take that out of the consideration. But then, Mark, why is the insurance more than what Zillow is telling me? And why is it $180,000 on Zillow, but they're saying $225,000? Well, typically... The, the easiest way, the, the easiest way, it's not like an exact science, but the easiest way to figure that out is grab out a calculator. Uh, I'll grab out my cell phone. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the cost of a house. So if your house is uh, 1,500 square feet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that by the cost per square foot that a construction company would charge. It's that simple. So right now I'm in Michigan. Uh, that cost is roughly about $100 to $145, depending on the quality of the, the house. So we're going to say $145. So you should be insuring that house for roughly, this is just the basic one, but about $217,500. So that would typically be a good guess. Now obviously if you have built-in shelves and three fireplaces and crown molding everywhere, that's going to add to the value. If there's a pool in the backyard, uh, that's going to add thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 or more. Uh, if there's a fence around the pool, how big is your deck? So there's a lot of things to take into consideration. So let's go back. So we've got uh, coverage A, which we're going to say on our house, our 1,500 square foot house, is $220,000. we are just going to make it simple. Okay, $220,000. You may have only paid $150,000 for the house, but what the insurance company is looking at is if your house lit on fire today, burned completely to the ground, how much is it going to cost them to build the entire house up? Okay, so what they're going to do is they're going to calculate, based on the houses in this zip code or this area, what is the cost of us to rebuild this house? So $140, $145 times 1,500 square feet is a good estimate. Now when you're looking at the square footage, not to get too in-depth, you don't want to count the basement. Um, at least in Michigan we don't count the basements because those are foundations and so those are going to be something separate. So you've got uh, 1,500 square feet above ground. Uh, that's where you have to really look at some of these listings online because they don't show you always above ground only. Uh, so you've got the dwelling A, then you've got, which is coverage A, Coverage B is separate structures. Anything not attached to the house, that's your fence, your shed, uh, your uh, if you have a, 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 a heater outside in a separate area, that's, a, that's another one like a gas stove, not a gas stove, but like a fuel wood burning stove or something or a pellet stove. Anything that's not attached to the house, a barn, um, that would typically be covered. In the case of a barn, that might be a little bit more valuable, so you'll probably have to add additional coverage for that. But it's usually on the average 10% of coverage A. That's the typical insurance policy. So if our house coverage A is 220000 we know that our coverage B, the other structures, anything not attached to the house, is going to be about 22000 Typically, they'll let you do more if you want, but usually that covers it. If your garage is detached, that counts as well. That's a separate structure. Okay. So then you've got coverage C, which is personal contents. That's anything you own. That's your couch, your TV, your, uh, your shoes, your anything that you have in the house. This is a little bit tricky. So this coverage is really huge to start off with. And it comes that way. It's cheap to have and they do it on purpose because it sounds great. But you're going to get, 
on our $220,000 house, we're probably going to say $160,000 worth of stuff. Good luck filling your house with that much stuff. <laughs> you got four TVs in every room, uh, you know, super high-end couches. The only thing you have to be careful, there's two pieces of this coverage that you have to be very careful with. So the first is don't count jewelry, guns, fur, anything that paintings, anything that has high value, those are excluded or they're added, but they're only to a certain amount. Each company's different, but most commonly it's about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per item. So if you have a jewelry ring that's thirty thousand dollars and it's stolen or there's a fire and it's gone, you're only covered for a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars on that, that thirty thousand dollar ring you need to do what's called an addendum. You need to add a writer or, or an extra coverage to cover that specific amount because the policy specifically says in most cases, and I, when I say most, I mean like the majority. In most cases, the policy is only going to cover a certain amount because they know in every house you're going to have about $1,500 in jewelry. If you're above that, then they need to add extra premium for it. It's not that expensive. I think $50,000 worth of jewelry would probably cost you another, you know, $80 per year. Um, it depends on the, on the item and all that. So that's your personal property. Uh, the second piece of personal property that you absolutely want to focus on, you want to make sure it's full replacement cost, not actual cash value. Actual cash value is like your car insurance. The older your car gets, the less value it has. So you want to make sure that as your couch is sitting in your house for 10 years, the older it gets, you don't want it to lose value. Because if you have a fire, and let's say the entire house goes up and you go to replace $100,000 worth of your stuff, and they write you a check for $40,000, you are not going to be happy. It's crazy how some people do this. So you want to be very careful with that. Make sure you always do full replacement cost. Same thing for renters. If you're in that situation, replacement cost, it doesn't matter. Even if you have $20,000 worth of stuff, you don't want to check for $8,000 when you have $20,000 worth of lost, stolen, or damaged item. Okay? So that's the second part. So you've got coverage A, coverage B, and coverage C. Those are the main pieces of insurance. Now just to go back and cover the next spot, so you also have the next coverage, which I believe is D. Uh, and that's going to be uh, loss of use. Uh, that basically means if you are, let's say there's a fire in the kitchen, and the kitchen's going to take a month and a half to repair. You have to move out of the house because they're going to be all over in there making dust and stuff. You can't be in there. It's not safe, right? So you have to move out of the house for the next month and a half. You're not near the house. You have to get to work. Someone has to mow the lawn. You just got to, there's stuff you have to pay for because this loss, this covered peril, uh, because of that loss, you're losing money, and that's going to cover that. So loss of use is going to cover you renting the other house for $1,000 a month or $1,500 a month, and you paying the guy to mow the lawn. Any Anything that you occur, any, any loss of, of funds, that's going to be covered in that piece because of the loss of use. So that's a great coverage to have. It's normally... I don't know what that is. It's, it varies from company to company. Some are actual loss sustained because there's very odd that you're going to, very rare that you're going to max that out because usually they can fix the house within a month or so and then you're a couple, couple thousand dollars loss of use and that's not a big deal. Otherwise, it's 10, 20 percent of coverage A, so you might get 40, 50 thousand dollars uh, loss of use, which is probably fine in my situation. I don't think I, I'm going to rent a mansion or anything. Uh, the last part is coverage D, which is medical payments, and that just means if somebody gets hurt on the property, they're going to pay that amount. It's typically defaulted to a thousand. Not a bad idea to go to five thousand. That's pretty normal. It's not there to cover their whole hospital bill if someone gets hurt. It's there. Your friends over there chopping lemons and they cut your their finger, right? They need stitches. It's five hundred dollars. They would rather pay up to the five hundred dollars or thousand dollars just flat out to get the medical done than have them deal with a lawsuit of them trying to get, you know, two thousand dollars later or five, you know, whatever it is. It's they're so to pay their deductible or just to make them whole as far as if they get hurt on the property. If that is not enough coverage, then what your friend's gonna do, and they pretty much have to, let's say they cut their finger off, right? Uh, and it was because something fell off your 
off the ceiling and bumped them in the head and they slipped and they cut their finger off, right? Ah! Or they fell down your stairs and, and they broke their neck, right? They've got a $300,000 medical bill now and they don't have medical. So what they're going to do is they're typically going to sue you or your insurance, hopefully your insurance if you have enough coverage. Um, in our situation, we did 5,000 medical, so it'll automatically pay that. If that's not enough, they're going to go after our insurance company, and that's the next coverage called liability. That's anything you're liable for. If a friend's over at your house, you're liable if they get hurt. Okay, that's just how it is, right? If they slip on your driveway and you didn't uh, clean off the snow from it, that's your fault. You're responsible for the front of your house. Even though the government might own your sidewalk, you're supposed to clean it off so it's safe. Uh, so that, that is what they're going to go after, liability. Now typically, here's the scary part, I see a lot of people and a lot of companies doing the minimum, which is $100,000. Think about that. In your car insurance, you're usually doing $250,000 or $100,000 per person up to three hundred or five hundred thousand per accident so you're typically doing almost a half a million in liability in your car insurance uh, if you're a homeowner that's the most common one uh, so you probably should match that and do at least a half a million five hundred thousand on your liability in home that's the typical starting point point. and then if you need more you can bump it up but in that situation I would lean towards something we'll cover later which is like an umbrella Okay, that's something that, that covers in excess of that liability. So most people, our, our basic $220,000 house, we're going to do a half a million in liability. And the reason we're doing the half a million is because I added up all my assets and I determined that I don't have more than $500,000 worth of assets. So the odds of somebody coming after me personally is going to be low. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the insurance. So if something happens, you don't get sued, the insurance company gets sued. The next part, so we've got uh, the, the property, so dwelling, we've got separate structures, we've got the personal property, we've got the loss of use, we've got the medical, and then we also have the liability. Those are the major pieces. The last piece is your deductible. Most commonly the default, most insurance agents just think in their head it's $1,000. That's the most common one. Now don't be afraid, if you have extra money, you may want to bump it up to $2,500. If you're the type of person that has enough funds where you can save away for a rainy day and you have, and you're not going to use your insurance anyways because, I mean, unless there's a $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 claim, the roof got ripped off because of a storm, right? I'm not going to claim that. I'm going to fix the problem myself not worry about the insurance and deal with my prices going up and down and all that stuff, right? So then that is probably a good idea to go with for that person that wants to save some extra money and just would rather have a higher deductible. Your insurance agent will probably like that because that means that you're telling them that you're not likely going to file a claim unless there's a major claim. And that's really what they're looking for. That's really the whole point of the insurance program is not to claim it because my power went out in my and I had fridge coverage and it covered $500 worth of my stuff and food and I'm gonna claim just the $500 That's crazy your insurance rate will probably double the following year and so you're gonna get $500 today and now you're gonna pay an extra $800 per year for the next three years I mean <laughs> come on this is the one thing that is a little sad is how and this isn't because they're trying to trick you or anything like that or you're just doing something wrong but when you file a house insurance claim it's a lot different than if you file an auto claim when you file an auto claim you can have two three four up to five accidents tickets all that before they start getting mad right they kick you out of the program well here you file one home claim that can raise your home insurance twenty to fifty percent huge one claim that's it so make sure the claims worth it if you file a second claim in some states, if you file one, one water claim, I believe it's Texas, don't, don't quote me, but I'm 80% sure it's Texas, but if you file one water claim, that gives them reason to kick you out flat out. I mean, they can't kick you out until the renewal, but then other companies won't pick you up, and those are usually the companies that you want to go with. Okay, so there's different little laws and rules. You want to be careful in that claim aspect with home insurance specifically. You don't want to use it if you don't have to. 
keep in mind if a claim happens, you don't have the money, something's there. If you got to use it, you got to use it. That's what it's there for, right? It's there for your protection. Just don't abuse it to the point where you're just, you can't afford it, right? Because it will be affordable as long as you're in the right area. So those are the main coverages. There's a lot of little things that I'm not going to go over today's video. Uh, there's tons of stuff. You can raise the price on guns, jewelry, furs. You can increase just general jewelry. If you have a $30,000 ring, you're going to have to get uh, an appraisal done, okay? So you're going to have to prove that. Well, what should I do? How do I know that they're going to honestly take care of my claim? Well, that's easy. Best way to do it, and here's what I tell everybody, if you have valuable stuff or stuff you think they'll question, take a photo. Put it online. Put it where people can't see it. You can go to Facebook. Uh, you can put a photo up there that's hidden, so only you can see that photo. If you have Dropbox, anywhere that you can get that access to that in the future, do that. That way, if someone says, well, how do, you know, how do we know you had that? Well, here's a picture. Here's the model number. Here's that. What they're going to do is they're going to look at your credit card statements. You'll probably have a record of you buying it. But in case you paid cash or you just got it from a friend, take a photo. It's not going to hurt you. The last piece I want to cover in the home insurance is a major piece, especially for Michigan, sewer and water backup. So sewer and water backup is if your pipes back up, you ever seen a toilet that bubbles, that's usually like an air leak and something's about to happen, like the water's going to come out of the toilet in a month or two. So something like that is going to be covered in that. If you have a sump pump where they pump water out of your house because you're in, in Michigan, you're kind of like in a bowl of clay, right? And you're just sitting in water and hopefully it's not coming in. Well, if they didn't es excavate it correctly, then you're going to you're gonna need that coverage because water is going to come in. It doesn't typically cover water coming in from the foundation, so make a mental note of that. That's not usually going to be covered. But if the water backs up, a sewer pipe backs up, um, a pipe bursts, uh, something happens where it's not your fault, Usually it's a covered peril, remember this, uh, and I will go over that in a second, but uh, as long as that's the situation, then you're covered. Okay, so you want to have that. I've personally cleaned that twice in my house. I had a sump pump, it failed. I uh, ended up filling up about $8,000 worth of damage, and I only had $5,000 worth of coverage. I bumped that up to $10,000. It failed again the following year. Uh, just a bad setup, we had to fix that. Ended up going into the other part of my house, and that was almost, that was actually right about ten thousand dollars to fix. So I'm glad I upped that. Um, yes, these all add pieces to it. Each little piece kind of adds to the insurance. Uh, the two things I want to mention real quickly before I end the video, and these are probably the the things that you're wondering about: Why is mine so much higher? Uh, if that's the case, you're probably in a higher protection class. That just means the response time from the, the fire station to you is slower than the typical house. And it's easy to find out. You're ranked from 1 to 10, and you are you're somewhere in between there. If you're a 2, you're usually in the city. Uh, I don't see many 1s. If you're a 3 or 4, you're right near the city. You've got a fire hydrant within 1,000 feet. The fire department's less than 5 miles or 3 miles away. You're good. If you're then it usually jumps. It usually doesn't go into 5 and 6. There are a few, but it usually jumps. You're uh, a 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere between there. 10 is where you got to get approval from the underwriters and prove that you're going to be okay. Uh, that means you're usually in the country. You're away from the city. There's not a fire hydrant nearby. Uh, the fire station might be 5 miles away instead of 3 miles. Uh, and then they might not have a tankless uh, system. So they are a tank system. So some fire stations have tank systems where the water is built into the truck, right? So they've got to get water used to somehow. So maybe the fire station over there, instead of this one that's near you, has to go because there's not a fire hydrant near you to get access to that. So if your house catches a fire, it's going to burn down. That's pretty much what they're saying. So that could be a reason if you're in a higher protection class. That's a huge reason that prices go up. The second is what I already mentioned before is all perils. So what that typically means is any occurrence, uh, they call them act of gods, uh, act of God, uh, where there's a tornado, a hurricane, a hailstorm, something happens uh, where like a tree gets hit by lightning, it falls on your house. You can't control that. There's nothing you could have done to fix it or prevent it. That's what an all peril is. If there's a fire, uh, if somebody goes into your house and steals your stuff, you can't control that part. Anyway, guys, I hope this helped. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up if you want to learn more.